I thank the Lord for what the Lord has done and what God is doing um, uh, in 2018. And I'll tell you something. I'm excited. I'm excited for what the Lord is yet going to do. And I am so excited about the theme that the Lord has given me for 2019. And uh, I want to tell you about it, but I got to try to save it. I've, I've let it slip in more ways than one, um, but I'm hoping that I can gather uh, myself long enough to just hold it for, what, two more weeks? And then we can release uh, what God has for us. And um, I believe that uh, 2019 will be a tremendous year. See, you got to know how to judge your years. First of all, if God lets you live a year, you won. See? <laughs> Praise the Lord. If 365 days later, you're in the land of the living with your life, health, and strength, that's a reason to start running right there. Whatever else may have happened, A glory fits in there somewhere. Bless you, Cooper. God bless you, man. Thank you. That's a blessing. That's a blessing right there. Then we, you look and you, then the next thing you do, you weigh your goals. And the, you weigh the goals that you set for yourself. Versus the goals that God set for you. And sometimes you look and you see that everything you set out to do worked the way you thought it would. Sometimes you look and see things that you set out to do didn't work the way you thought. But you look up and say, God, did I give you more glory than I caused you trouble? Amen. Did I stay faithful? And am I closing out in a good place spiritually first and foremost and when you can answer those questions and there's a yes in there and you know that you're yet saved and yet serving the Lord you have reasons to give God praises and to be thankful for what the Lord has done amen uh, so Merry Christmas to everybody Amen. During this Christmas season, you know, at Upper Room, we say Merry Christmas. And we've been fighting for that for a long time. You know, the president is saying that we say Merry Christmas. And I'm glad that he's saying that. But we didn't get it from him. Long before uh, he was ever uh, elected, we have um, resisted the temptation to secularize. <clears throat> Christmas and to take Christ out of Christmas. The, fe the, the federal government, regardless of what anyone else tells you, and all federal rec workers know I'm telling the truth, recognize one holiday in the month of December. You don't get days off for Hanukkah. You don't get days off for Kwanzaa. You get time off for Christmas. That's the only recognized federal holiday in the month of December. And uh, I lose people when I talk about these things, but uh, a, a Hanukkah gets more recognition in America than it does in Israel. For in Israel, it is recognized as a minor day of celebration. It only gets the recognition in America that it does because those who try to lift it, they're not pro-Hanukkah, they're anti-Christmas. Black folk have an allegiance to Kwanzaa because a black man made Kwanzaa up. There is no historical significance. There is nothing that happened in the past that connects to the observance of Kwanzaa. So it doesn't have a right to be even mentioned in the same sentence with Christmas. 
There was a born again Christian who loved Jesus Christ who hit a man in the face and knocked him across the yard at the night at the uh, uh, at uh, when he when he crossed when he said some things against the Nicaean Creed who was a saved man who for Christmas on three separate nights left bags of gold to help his friend who had fallen on hard times. The man had daughters, and the oldest daughter was going to sell her uh, herself into prostitution to try to make money to help the family. And the, the friend decided to help the family, and he loved orphan children, and he built a toy room for children to help them, and the man's name was St. Nicholas. So there is history tied to St. Nicholas. Now this North Pole stuff in Santa Claus, that's, that's another story. But at least there was, there lived a St. Nicholas who was saved and loved Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday I'll give you the whole story. And before Nicholas, Christ was born. And let me tell you something. Forty some odd years before Aurelian's edict declaring Christmas, the December, to be the winter solstice season. Forty-two years before that, North Africans, black folk, were celebrating Christ's birth on December the 25th. So there is history, praise the Lord, to when we do it, how we do it, and that we do it. And I want everybody to stand up and praise God for allowing his son to come and be born for us. There's something to it. This ain't no made up celebration. It's a real celebration. Amen. Christ the Savior was born. Praise the Lord. I, amen. So you all can be seated, but I just want you to know uh, what's going on. Say amen. So now, you see all these commercials, the seasons this and seasons that, and oh, the holiday season. Uh, it, you know what? It, it's, it's to an unknown God. And, and, and have you noticed uh, we have allowed different movements to cause a hostility toward black folk and Christianity. Well, you know, Jesus is a white man, God. You show your ignorance when you make a statement like that. Well, all of the pictures I saw of Jesus, the painting was, he was white. Where have you? Yeah, well, since there are no photographs. And by the way, if he was white, I'd serve him. If, 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 he was, if he was as white as folk living in the North Pole, it wouldn't make any difference to me. But if you study where he was born, you know, if you study where he sojourned and the complexion of the people of the area, you would know that Christ, he was not African American. His skin was brown. Somebody said, well, what does it matter? It mattered to Napoleon. It mattered to the Europeans that because as they took over Christianity, they, re, they, they whitewashed it. They burned all of the original Madonnas of a very dark-skinned woman with a very dark-skinned baby, and they redid it with a white woman with a white baby. Amen. Amen. And so what the devil has done and we, we, we just buy this stuff, you know, because we don't think as we are, uh, have almost shamed us into uh, identifying with Jesus. Well, let me tell you something. I identify with Jesus. I'm a Christian. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm glad about it. I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. I love Jesus. Jesus saved me. Jesus changed my life. Jesus brought me out. 
I was headed nowhere fast until Jesus laid his hands on me. Jesus is my hero. He's my savior. He's my Lord. Praise the Lord. And I would rather have Jesus than anyone else and anything. Praise the Lord. How many love Jesus today? Praise the Lord. So I, I didn't get up to say all that, but I, 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 um, I have to uh, say these things this time of the year because, you know, we're almost now, we're almost afraid to be identified with Jesus. We think that as a people, the only thing we can be identified with is a Democrat party. The devil is a liar. We can be identified, I, I'm identified with my church. I love the church of God of Christ. Amen. I, I identify, praise the Lord, I'm a, I'm a North Carolinian. And I am a proud American. Well, it's hard being a black man living in America. Try being a black man living somewhere else. Try that. You'll run back to America. Saying, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I'm, you, if you don't sing Lee Greenwood's I'm Proud to Be America, you're saying James Brown's Living in America. But you'll be glad to be in America. Amen. Super highway, coast to coast. Don't, don't y'all play that. They'll think, they'll think we've been practicing it. <laughs> Isn't it amazing we've gone from, uh, uh, in just a few years, dancing in our community to songs like Living in America to almost being anti-American. It's almost, it's almost a badge of honor now to be a black person mad at America. I hate America. But I like living in America. Eye to eye, station to station. Got to have a celebration. Pop, 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 pop. Rock my soul. Living in America. Somebody praise God for his goodness, his kindness, and his tender mercy. Amen. Oh, I'm right, sister. Y'all, look. I've been here longer than you have. I know what I'm talking about. See, some things, if you, you better learn how to say amen to. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. Well, let me tell some of you something who are in ministry. See, sometimes you get to look like you know as much as I do. You don't. You don't. You can't, you can't, you can't compare. Ain't but one set man. See, now when I just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. See, you look around and see, I'm trying to help our people. Hispanics are being taught the greatness of America. Why do you think they tr they're trying to get in here? White people are taught the greatness of America. Asians are taught the greatness of America. All of the smart Indians leave India and come over here oh my lord and they take advantage of everything and then there's this one group of people who are constantly taught not to love the country not to hate the country not. now notice how others are progressing now, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't come to church to say all this but, you, but I want you to pay attention. Study other groups. Study what's being said to them. What their leaders say to them. The Asians are the best at it. Among the best. Keep the ways of the old country. But learn the ways of America. Amen. Jews do it. Hispanics have surpassed us. And there's a, there's a group of people, group of men, who we are taught to be angry. 
Our, our natural disposition is that of attitude. Attitude. Bad Negro. And that stuff gets you nowhere fast. Baddest man on the block. Baddest man on the job. Working for somebody else. It doesn't work that way. Amen. And what I'm, what I'm saying, I, 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 uh, you're not going to hear this in, uh, in many other places, so I try to tell you things. Um, that will help you. It doesn't sound good. That's why it's hard to make you up. You have to think about it for a few minutes because it doesn't go along with uh, what, you, what most are saying to us. But it goes along with what most are saying to their own. That's the way they, that's the way they feed their boys and their girls. They tell them work, 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 work hard, work smart, work long, get there early, leave late, work, put the time in, be smart, be diligent, apply yourself, work, 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 work. In many cases, they teach them, don't marry us. Don't be like us. Don't be like them. Don't be like the boys who show their drawers in public. Don't be like them. Don't be like people who walk like apes, thinking that's cool. Don't be like them. So that's, this was said about us. Then when somebody tried to tell you something, uh, this is this is still Merry Christmas, but, but I'm trying to tell you how to have one. You adopt these principles, your your Christmas will be merry and bright. Am I right, preacher? God bless you, Amen. Cooper, am I right? Yes, sir. Glad to see you. Awesome man of God and a dear friend. So enough of that. God bless our live stream audience. I can imagine the comments, but I'm telling you the truth. Amen. I'm going to be mad. I'm going to fight. You're going to lose. I want you to win. I want you to succeed. Amen. Amen. Get, get rid of that attitude. Sometimes you scare people. Somebody want to offer... I want to offer you an open door, but they look at you and you. What you looking at me for, Willis? And next thing you know, they go give the job to somebody else. And it was a door that God had for you. You know, people say, let me just, let me move on. People say, what God has for me is for me. That is a true statement, but it is not complete, nor is it comprehensive. It's for you if you work with the program. Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would have gathered you to myself as a hen doth gather her chickens, but you would not. Therefore, your house is left desolate. And he walked out of the temple and never went back in. He said, what I had for you was gathering you to me. That's what I came here for. But you wouldn't cooperate. All the things that we've missed that God had for us. But we would not. Clap your hands for Jesus and give God the praise. Hallelujah. That's a good mini, that's a good homily, it's a good mini sermon this morning.